Today we're talking about operations and linear expressions, and our learning goal is to apply properties of operations as strategies to add, subtract, factor, and expand linear expressions with rational coefficients. So the properties of operations are the simple properties that we discussed early in the year associative, commutative, identity, we want to use those properties to manipulate equations so that we can write them in simplest form. We can simplify them and make them easier to understand. So in your notebook, you should have um, the two little foldable templates for constant and variable and coefficient and vector. And so in the middle of the constant variable, you're going to insert a plus sign because 7 plus w is a constant plus a variable. Whereas in the middle of the coefficient and the factors, you're going to insert an equal sign because 4xy is the same as 4 times x times y. As we flip those up, we'll fill in what each of those um, descriptors stand for. So a constant is a quantity whose value does not change. So 7 is a constant, 12 is a constant, 32 is a constant. Any number where the value is not changing, the, the value is defined and it never changes. Whereas a variable is a symbol, and it's usually a letter, and it stands for um, an unknown value. So a symbol or a letter which represents an unknown value. So when I say an unknown value, basically what I mean is that um, I would put in a variable when I'm not sure what the number is. For example, if I'm going out to the store to buy a certain number of cookies and I don't know how many cookies I'm going to buy, I would put in a symbol, a variable to stand for that. So it would be C. C would stand for cookie. And if I knew the cost of the cookies were 50 cents, then I could say 50 cents times the number of cookies I was going to buy, C, would equal my total price. But since I don't know how many cookies I'm going to buy yet, I'm just going to hold that place with a variable. On the other hand, a coefficient is the number preceding um, a variable, and it's a factor. A factor of a variable. So in this case, the 4 is my coefficient, and that's because 4 is being multiplied by the x and by the y. So it's the coefficient, it's in the front, so it's first when I write. Um, if I know that I have 8 x's, I'm always going to write 8 x. I'm not going to write x and then 8. So the factors are the numbers or variables being multiplied. And that's always important, right? Anything that's being multiplied together is a factor. So as we scroll down our page, you should have the terms of expressions foldable pop it, kind of popping out of your notebook. And we're just going to take a minute and we're going to add some terms. Now, it should only be really glued down to your paper on this one square so that across the inside I can open it up and add some terms. So the first term I'm going to add is K. And then I'm going to say plus 5mn plus 6 over 1 minus k minus um, 27. 
okay? And when I look at this expression, I have a lot of variables, I have a lot of numbers, but I want to identify each term. Terms are separated by addition or multiplication. So, I'm sorry, addition or subtraction. So in this case, I have four terms. Because in between the four terms in my equation, I have an addition sign or a subtraction sign. So the terms themselves are the k, the 5mn, the 6 over 1 minus k, and the 27. There are four different components to my equation. It's important to know what terms are because we can combine like terms. And that's a really important vocabulary word. Like terms have the same variable. So, for example, 2y and 7y are like terms. They have the same variable. So when I say I have 2y and 7y, I really have 9y. They also need to have the same power. So, for example, um, 3x squared and 4x squared have the same power, so that gives me 7x's squared. So they must have the same variable, or variables, they could have more than one variable, and the same power. So as we kind of fold up our little um, term foldable, I'm just going to shrink this down so that you could see kind of where on the paper I'm writing. So when I fold up my foldable, it should end up like as one square off to the side, kind of like this. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to write a little bit about combining like terms or using properties to simplify. So when I'm using properties to simplify, um, I could do a couple different things. Let's do an example. And this example, we're going to write an equal expression. I'm using this word expression a lot. An expression is a mathematical equation that has variables in it. So if I'm going to write an equal expression to 4 times x plus 7 minus 9. I want to use a property that I know to write this expression. And when I look at this, immediately I think of distributive. So I see the 4 can be distributed to the x and to the 7. So I'm going to write 4 x's plus 4 times 7 is 28 minus 9. So I use the distributive property to kind of expand that expression. And now I'm going to look at my like terms again to see if there's anything I can combine. Like terms say I need the same variables and the same power. So first of all, I have this 4x. I don't have any other x's, but I do have whole numbers. So I have a 4x. And I have a positive 28 and a negative 9. 28 minus 9 is 19. So I'm going to add 19. There are no more like terms for me to combine. So the simplest form of this expression is 4x plus 9. That's definitely much nicer looking than the original expression that we started with. So these are some really good skills so that we can kind of make our um, math look a little easier. So the next example that we'll do um, is going to say, Jenny says 
that 7a minus 4 plus 3a uh, minus 6 and 4a minus 10 are equal. So Jenny tells us that this equation and this equation are equal. Is she right? Well, let's take a look. The larger equation is obviously that 7a minus 4 plus 3a. So let's see if there are common um, terms, if there are like terms. So 7a is um, the same as 3a, or is a like term to 3a, because it has the same variable. Whereas the 4 and the 6 are like terms because they have the same variables. So in order for me to combine those like terms, first I'm going to use the commutative property. The commutative property says that I can change the order of these numbers and they'll still be the same. So I'm going to take my 7a and I'm going to put it close to my 3a because they are like terms. And then I'm going to take the 4 and put it close to the 6 because those are like terms. Now as a hint, as a side note, you always want to make sure you keep the sign from in front of the term with that particular term. If there's no sign in the front, it's positive. So I kept my 7a as positive, I kept my 3a as having a plus sign in front of it, and then I kept the 4 and the 6 as having a minus sign in front of them. Now I can combine those like terms. If I have 7a's and 3a's, then I have a total of 10a's. And then I have a minus 4 and a minus 6. So when I look at those things together, minus 4 and minus 6 together is really minus 10. So this seems to be the simplest form I can write this expression in, 10a minus 10. 10a minus 10, though, is not equal to 4a minus 10. So Jenny was not correct in saying that these were equivalent expressions. So these two things are not equivalent. In your notebook, I would like you to finish your proof problem, which says write an equivalent expression for x plus 6 minus 5 plus 9. You can um, use any property that you think of.